me and my buddies were tearing that stuff up. That's why today, like I said before, I don't know what day I'm going to go on stage, shit in my hand, and take it out and throw it at the audience because one of these days, one of these cylinders are going to snap. Yeah. And the real Joey Diaz is going to come out. Dementia is definitely in my future, especially if we did this, this shit at the age of 13, 14. Yeah, it's early. That's hard stuff early, too. Early. I, I, I partied so hard. <sighs> My sh- freshman going into sophomore year that I got put in the hospital that September <clears throat> because I had a lung infection. And they threw me out on September 28, 1979. And I got out of the hospital at 11 o'clock. At 8 o'clock that night, I was smoking dope and doing acid again. Jesus Christ. It was like Muhammad Ali fought somebody. <laughs> I still remember what corner I'm on. My brother's ex-wife's house is on that corner and I know what house we sat on the steps like and I and I kept doing that powder and I kept snorting that shit and then one day I walked into the basement and my mom had these friends that she would hold shit for downstairs but it was always weed bales of weed like uh, the coffee bean mm-hmm. type bales and I would take a little off the top and I would spray it with water <laughs> to maintain the weight yeah. I put like the holes in I put like 12 ounces of water in the middle so it would stay heavy. So when they put it on the scale, I was a fucking genius. Oh, back then. that's great. And I fucking, uh, but one time I went down in there and it wasn't uh, weed, it was Coke. A couple of bales of Coke. So I would open up the bales and fucking take a gram. I wouldn't do them. I would give it to a buddy of mine that was a real cool dude. And he would say to me, Where'd you get that shit? Oh my God! I saw Chinese people. You know, it was it was real cocaine. This shit. And I, every once in a while, I'd scrape a little and take it and give it to him. This went on for about a month or two. Then the guy became a cop, so now I owned him. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. Said, Man. You know, I knew he was going to do something with his life, and he became a cop. Boom! Now I owned him. But that's not the point of the story. I held on to that one. One dad took it, and, and I would surprise him. Like in 1979, when somebody would surprise you with cocaine, you pretty much sucked this day. <laughs> in 1979, walking into a room with cocaine, those two chicks were going to suck your dick. They knew, forget Harvey Weinstein. You, you'd make Harvey Weinstein look like a fucking gay guy. That's how strong the power of cocaine was. Guys like me could get laid. Women were doing disgusting things. It was a different level of disgust because it meant you had power. It was like this social. If you came out of a bathroom and you went, the whole bar would look at you and come over and rub your shoulders. How is it? It's semi-intense. You know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what was going on in yeah. Studio 54. This cocaine freedom makes me, you know. So that shit sold it made white people go crazy but at the same time i hadn't done it i held on to that little package then the night before some cats called me up and they're like we're playing hooky tomorrow so i said fuck let me bring the package and see if one but these guys are too straight there was like eight of us but one of the other dudes was a genius and him and i used to do fucking that angel dust shit at school from time to time and one day i gave him a line he thought it was coke. I gave him a line of that shit, and he had a wrestling match, a high school wrestling match. Oh, my God. Room, and he was on the bottom, and he made a move, and he bit the guy. <laughs> he got disqualified. <laughs> and people were like, why would you bite the guy? Fucking Coco gave me fucking THC crystal. Uh, THC I thought the crystal, was yeah. beat me up and shit. That's what we all called it, to, uh, <laughs> to avoid the pain of what it really was. Right, yeah. You know? My brother, um, he and a buddy, I actually told this whole story on my album, but he and a, and a, and a, a cousin brought some shit home one time, and they called it Sherm. It was a, and, and they would call it Paul Chuck Paul. That's what they call PCP, Paul Chuck Paul. And they would, um, they would, it was popular for a little while to dip this shit in PCP, these joints. And I, I thought it was a myth at first. I was like, ah, it doesn't happen. Because you hear shit on, like, Oprah, people doing it, dipping their cigarettes and cooking their babies and shit. Like, insane stuff that these suffocating kids and freezers, like. And um, they decided to smoke it in front of me. And, 
you know, I tell that story, but the, the thing was, I thought it was a one and done thing for them. You know what I mean? Like I knew they had done it, but it's like the summer of 94. I'm fresh off the Pink Floyd concert. I go back to Maryland for the summer before for between college. And I'm seeing this girl at the time and we're going to Lollapalooza. Now, originally Nirvana was going to headline. I, I'm almost positive it's 94. And then Cobain died. Um, so they brought the Smashing Pumpkins in to fill that space. And it was a great, it was like Tribe Called Quest. I think the Beastie Boys were there. Fucking P-Funk was there. Uh, the Smashing Pumpkins, like it was It was a good one. Um, and um, they're smoking a joint. And I don't think anything of it. I just think it's a joint. And the girl I'm seeing at the time goes over to take a hit. You know, she smokes weed. And uh, she comes back and she's like, that tasted really weird. And I was like, you motherfucker. And I went over to my brother. I'm like, is that fucking weed or is that that shit you were smoking? They no, it's the, the fuck. I go, what do you fuck? You, you, you can't just let some, you got to tell somebody that. Well, we thought she knew. I'm like, why would anyone assume that you're smoking PCP laced weed over here? Why would anyone, why would that be your immediate? It probably should be the way you treat life. But why would anyone assume that anyway? And this poor girl. I mean, she tripped out of her fucking mind for hours. I mean, she missed the she missed the whole fucking show. She she finally collapsed and slept for hours. But when she woke up, and she was she was in shape, fit, you know, slender. This fucking girl was she was starving like a fucking hostage. And I told them, you know what your penalty is going to be? You're going to fucking feed her whatever she wants at these goddamn festival prices. And this chick, I mean, she ate for a family. I'd never seen anything like it. And she's like, I can't believe I'm still hungry. And she's just going, I was like, eat it up, girl. Eat it all up. Make these motherfuckers buy. They spent $300 or so in food just for her to starve. I mean, I'd never seen anything. And then I went to dinner with her when I went back to Maryland, just not uh, not too long ago. And we're sitting at dinner, and I don't say anything. She goes, um, she goes, remember that time um, your brother had me smoke PCP? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I was wondering if you are going to bring that shit up or not. She's like, I've never eaten so much in my life. She's a mom and shit. And I was like, yeah, I'm so sorry about that. I PCP do remember. was a complete, Fuck. like all that shit was just so, I don't know what to call it. Not ill-advised. I don't know. Mm. It was kind of ill-advised. Yeah. Because. That one just always seemed dirty to me. You know what I mean? Like, like l- literally dirty. Like, a, just a physical dirty drug. Like, cocaine seemed, I don't know why. I know it's cut and everything, but like you're talking about, pure. Weed's pretty much untouched. Shrooms are untouched. It's once people put their real fucking hands on it, I, well, I feel like it shrooms, they, 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 They're grown in shit. Yeah, they are grown in shit. Yeah. yeah I, I, just, I don't like how they taste. Yeah. Yeah. I'll try the capsules you have. Wait, you have shroom capsules? Oh yeah, we're gonna have that oh. process right now. Uncle Joe, Uncle Joey's high tech shroom capsules for the mind, soul, and spirit. Are you working on selling that? Yes. Oh, you need to, dude. Yes, it's gonna go. It's going legal in some states, I believe, in micro doses. Yeah, it's Colorado right I now. I believe right? in putting them in capsules and weighing them out. And we're going in like fucking marines. You understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.